Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast, The Engineer Whisperer. I am super excited to have Joelle here with me today. We're starting season four. I have amazing guests lined up. And today, yes, um, it's going to be a treat. So, Joelle, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Andrea. Uh, so glad I could join you. Yes, this has been a while in the making, but today is the day when we sit down. And uh, as we begin, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so like Andre said, my name is Joel. I am originally from the DRC, and uh, I just recently moved to the UK with my wife, and I'm a new dad. I have twins, a boy and a girl, and I've been married for five years, and um yeah, moved from South Africa to the UK and before that moved from the DRC to South Africa, study university there and I lived there for 14 years and then recently moved to the UK since January 2023. And uh, yeah, that's me. And quickly, how is to have twins in the house? <laughs> it's a bit chaotic. They just, they turn uh, one a month ago. So they are just, they literally turned 13 months today. It's a bit chaotic and you realize the... How crazy is it, you know, to have small human beings that you have to teach them stuff, but also you learn quickly how you can just use one hand to do a whole lot of different things. So it's very interesting. So I'm I'm used to carrying both of them with my with both the hands, and uh, yeah, it's chaotic, but also such a blessing and so great and learning so much. A transition in itself, but today I invited you to talk about a different transition. Yes, you you said. Ask me about an uncomfortable change that changed my life. So I don't know <laughs> any more about it. I am super curious. So let's get started. Yeah. Tell me more about it. <laughs> yeah, I like to be mysterious. So uh, about just over 10 years ago, I was fairly new in my career, fairly early in my career. I came out of university at the time I just graduated, came out of university and I was, you know, I was working, it was, it was my first time job, my, uh, my first job. And um, at the time, I just really was struggling with kind of staying focused. So I'll pick one thing and then like quickly move on to the next thing and then the next thing and the next thing. And that lack of focus kind of got me into a very, very interesting space where I actually became a low performer. Uh, it was first time ever, obviously it's my first job, but first time ever in my, in my journey being a low performer. And I remember at the time I was pulled out of all production projects and I was put onto maintenance. So for about almost a year, I did not touch any production code and everything that I needed to do needed to be reviewed by at least four or five people. And it was very uncomfortable because here I was thinking that I'll be changing everything. I'll change the world, you know, very young, naive engineer. And then very quickly being realizing that I lack the sense of focus and the sense of, you know, direction and discipline to the point where the quality of my work was so poor that I had to be pulled out of, you know, the production project and just being put on maintenance. That was literally the, the guy who would be doing all the maintenance and updating plugins. It was WordPress websites who so was just kind of like updating plugins and doing, you know, documentation, all the grant work that people don't really like to be doing. And I had to do that. And that journey has taught me so much, but I think instead of, you know, very quickly being defensive of like, oh, okay, you know, they got it wrong and all of those different things, I found myself in that space where realizing that I had two choices. I could either be very defensive and, you know, kind of like make excuses and so on, or I could take that as a learning opportunity, kind of take that and figure out, okay, what is true about what the, the feedback that I'm receiving? Because to be honest, as a first time job, it was for the first time that I kind of got challenging feedback, but I also kind of got feedback, you know, about the quality of my work. So, yeah. you know, very quickly, I just kind of paused, wrote a couple of things down and also kind of made a plan. Okay, what will change? What will no longer be this about me? What, what about this story will not be true? few few years down the line and I kind of started and I applied myself like I've never applied myself and it changed quite a few different things and from that day on I still remember I woke up every day from 4 30 a.m in the morning from that moment on and then we are now 10 years later every day I still wake up at 4 30 a.m nothing crazy about it I think it's just because I wanted to put some discipline in my in my day where I have a dedicated amount of time where I exercise and I do a whole lot of other things so that I can have my day in a structured manner. 
So that's kind of like a little bit of an uncomfortable situation. It was really awkward because I think you got to have a meeting with your boss about the fact that you are not pulling your weight. And um, very recently, I was thinking about that story and I was telling somebody, I know, like, I actually can't believe it. I'm like, sometimes I also can't believe it, but it made me the person that I am today because it taught me so much about life and about work and how I can apply myself and so on. And I'm just so glad that at that point in time, I made the decision to look inwardly and see what is true about the feedback that I'm receiving other than being very defensive. So that's a little bit of the journey. Yes, and and this is why I wanted to have you here because I talk all about how change is, is an external event or situation that happens to us. And then there's that yeah. transition, which is yeah. that internal psychological process that you're talking about. Is mm -hmm. we emotions are going crazy, and then we have this opportunity to decide either I'm gonna get stuck, I'm gonna push back, get angry about it, resist it, or I'm gonna do something different about it, make a yeah. plan, decide how I'm gonna get through it. Mm -hmm. So you share that you got yourself through it, you made a plan, you you introduced some new habits, um. As you were going through, tell me more about that internal psychological process. As of, it, it's so difficult for most of us to to sit with our emotions and to yeah. accept these, as you said, the the feedback that yeah, I I was a low performer. So what got you through it? Do you remember <sighs> what? Yeah, I think there's a number of things, and I think it's probably not just one thing. I think it was a number of things. I mean, if I'm being honest, it's probably very easy to say like, oh yeah, I made the decision to kind of change things. But I think the first the first time I got the feedback, it actually caught me by surprise. And I almost was a little bit on the defensive side in terms of effectively to kind of be like, this is not true and all of that. But I remember taking a walk and just kind of like, you know, walking. But also I have really good mentors in my life who have actually kind of really taken me. And one of the things that I we agree with my mentor was that honesty is the look at like the foundation of our relationship. So I've got to be very honest, not picking up, not just picking the high, but also picking the lows and really going through the journey together. So I remember having a chat with my mentor and just kind of giving that feedback and then kind of him really challenging me about the fact like, okay, what about this feedback is true? What about this feedback is not true? And be very, very honest. And going through that entire exercise, I realized that majority of the feedback were actually true. And the other parts that were not true were partially true purely because there were elements of things that I did and the things that I didn't do. And there was a lack of consistency. And that lack of consistency made the feedback entirely true. And obviously, on the other hand, also is when you're receiving feedback, you know, now I look back and as a manager, uh, you know, there's an element of ownership that I've got to be able to take about the feedback. When I have somebody who's underperforming as a manager, also, I've got to be able to say, what part of this, or like what, what got this, this person to this point? Like what part of this entire journey is my responsibility to also, did I drop the ball? And at that point in time, there was less about that from the person I was receiving that feedback, but that didn't matter. So in my chat with my manager, it was like, that doesn't matter the fact that, you know, they didn't take accountability for the fact that they were supposed to help you. What yeah. matters is you have everything in your power to change it. And then the other, the other, you know, foundation of our relationship, my relationship with my mentor was that I'm never going to complain about, I don't complain about anything that I'm not willing to actually put the work and change. And that was the one thing. I have a very tight mentor, but it was basically like, you will allow me to, you know, rent for a couple of minutes. But if I complain more than once about something, the next question will be, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to change about it? So Fast track after our tough conversation and obviously me having the night to think about that feedback, I sat down and I just kind of like, okay, made a list of things and I shared that, that list with him. And you were like, okay, looking at that list, it looks good, but what are the actions? It looks kind of like a list of to-do things, but like what is actionable? And also called I remember what is achievable in the short term and what is achievable in the long term because you very much quickly, and it's something that I kind of heard from different people, but I think it's basically, I think the gist of it was that you underestimate or you overestimate what you can do in a year and you underestimate what you can do in 10 years. It's like you're going to have a very long career. And the only way you can have a long career is 
you should become very realistic about what you can achieve in the short term and then in the long term. So let's kind of break it down. So that list got cleared and it was like a whole long list and it kind of got very small, but it also became very much about things that I could look back and be like, okay, this week or this sprint, what am I achieving? Just that one thing. And that really brought me a sense of clarity. So I think internally, it was a lot of help from my mentor, but also just being brutally honest about myself, but also realizing where do I want to head? Where does yeah. my career want to go? And not necessarily just kind of like the here and now. Sometimes you get, you know, obscured or sometimes the feedback that you receive kind of almost doesn't really make you look beyond that point. But you got to very quickly realize, okay, I'm here now. How do I make the first step? It's just one step. Just make that one thing. Yes. Okay. And then that one thing, and then can turn into another thing and to another thing. And then very quickly, now you look back and you're like, oh, how did I get there? And honestly speaking, it was just that one conversation that I had with my mentor and that long list that broke, got broken down into the one thing that I could do for the next sprint. And that brought a whole new sense of clarity. Obviously, there were things that went wrong and all of that. But I think overall, I remember just kind of thinking every single time when I got stuck, I would just think, what is the one thing that I need to do right now? I think about a hundred things that are going wrong. That's one thing. And I focus on that one thing. Yes. And then go do it, right? It's the decide, find the clarity, and then yeah. take the action, complete it, start yeah. and finish. And um, well, thank you very much for sharing. I, I love the framework that almost set you up for success through your yeah. relationship with your mentor. I mean, what I heard is honesty and you can complain and, and vent, but if you do it the second time and you don't do anything about it, then you need to drop it. So there was some, there was this very solid framework that you already developed yeah. so that when a change happens like this, you, you were able, how I call it, to stand on your foundation. Yeah. And then to look from that point. Now, okay, so you were you had a mentor, you were honest, and you gained clarity and you did the first thing. I wonder what was it, through that whole year, what was the most challenging for you, if anything? Yeah, it's a simple question, but it's a hard question. I think the most challenging thing was keep showing up but also just keep doing the work. Sometimes it felt repetitive, but I think it's in the repetition that I learned the value of consistency and being consistent in doing the thing over and over and over and over. And then from the building that solid foundation effectively, because I think very quickly when I received that feedback and then I knew that part of it were true, I just wanted to focus on how do I get past this point? How do I turn things around very quickly? But I just realized that, you know, it was just like just doing that one thing over and over. Being good. Today I'm good. Okay, how do I make sure that tomorrow I'm also good? And obviously you have good days and bad days, but I think it was in the value of just kind of like really doing good work. And I think majority of the problem that I had was I was focusing on way too many things and not having a structure. So by structuring my day in a way that allowed me to just focus on one thing, and then on the next things and on, on the next thing made made me kind of get to a place where I just had to be consistent in doing that one thing, focusing on that one thing, beginning to an end and then moving to the next thing. I think it was really challenging because at times you almost feel like you've graduated from doing this type of work and you want to move on to the next thing very quickly. And you're almost kind of like, oh, I feel like I can pick up more things. But I just kind of kept reminding myself that, okay, stick to it. And some days I'll not stick to it. And then very quickly I'll realize, oh, okay, there's a reason why I have to stick to this plan. So I think that was probably the hardest thing because if you think about it, it's like it's very easy for me to do my to put my plan together and also do it for a week, maybe for a month. Yes. But when you're looking a year, it's a very long time for you to kind of be consistent. And that value of consistency is the one thing that I had to learn the really, really hard way. So yeah, I'll probably say that was the hard, the the simplest way, the simplest thing, but also the hardest thing. Mm, yes, yes. So what mindset shifts did you have to make? What or and and or what new new skills, you know, kind of internal skills you had to learn to 
to stick with it because as, I, I'm a big believer too. It's we can perform and become high performers, um, learn something and then do it for a day, for a week, for a month. And the results are there. But as you said, the keeping the performance and adding the time challenge, the 12 months, the 52 weeks, uh, for so that your average result is gonna be above average. So still high performing if you add up all those days. Yeah. Uh, that's an amazing skill. It's it's I I say that that's pushing the limits of mastery, of of becoming <laughs> um, because you master yourself internally of how to then master what you're doing. So, but let's not yeah. push there yet. So the question <laughs> was, was there a new mindset that you introduced a new skill that you brought in so that you become successful? Yeah, I think very quickly, I had to move into a space of putting some structure. And I think very quickly, we are very easy to put a plan together. I think anybody can put the plan together. We are very ambitious. You put some ideas on a piece of paper, you're like, I will be able to kind of get there. But I think what it comes down to is that first step that you take, right? But also you got to take that step again and again. So for me, coming out of university where... You know, there's a bunch of different classes. There's a sense of structure, but I think overall, like, you know, you get moved from university straight into a job where there's a different expectation, effectively. And I think that expectation kind of brings a whole new sense. Of, it shakes your world a little bit. And I think I initially approached it the wrong way, where I was like, okay, I might be an amazing engineer, but what's my plan, effectively? How do I get there? I didn't have an idea of how do I become a great engineer. So and I think, you know, going through that entire challenge kind of really made me re almost press reset to so basically kind of like, okay, how do I create structure in my day? So my day looked like having a clear calendar, having a clear to-do list, but also knowing exactly how do I do things? How do I time box things? And I had, I had to learn tricks like, okay, when I'm troubleshooting something, you know, when do I ask for help? And also where do I drop my pride and kind of like make it like, okay, maybe, you I know, love that. <laughs> maybe maybe this is a bit too much for me like how do I break it down effectively and I think that's kind of like how I you know that's the mindset that I had to shift for me where I had to make sure that okay I'm taking notes so I will always start my day making sure that I have a clear plan of what what you know what's gonna what needs to be done obviously things happen and the, your day gets shaken out a little bit but that's fine but I think what I what I had to realize okay at the end of this day what do I want to achieve and also kind of realizing what are the steps that I need to do. And that's basically how I kind of got, got me started where almost everything that I would do, I had to internalize it and figure out what are the steps that I need to take in order to achieve that. And then very quickly focus on that step, on that step, on that step. So it's very, it's almost kind of like a lot of engineers, the way you think about, you know, solving a problem effectively. But I think when you are new in your career, you don't have those skills. You're not, you are not. You don't know all of those different things. And I think that's kind of like, I needed to kind of go back to first principle almost of how to solve a problem. And because it is, in fact, it is a problem that you want to solve, right? It's just like how you go about it. So that is the mindset that you need to shift. It seems very simple, but I think for me, it was a big one because in that journey, I had to learn discipline. Like the discipline, like, you know, number one was the planning. The second one was the discipline. How do I put the plan together, but also stick to it? Like, that's why I had to start waking up a little bit early because very quickly, my day was a little bit on structure where I'll do this, I'll do that, and then all of that. But when you have a job that you got to have a little bit of structure, you got to be able to show up and discipline and so on. So I think that's kind of like what, cha what changed for me. Hmm. Now, a lot of engineers um, are very good at the technical skills and the problem-solving skills. What I'm curious about with you, Joel, is that is that that emotional side is all this i you know i talk about transition as a sandwich there's the new there's there's the old and the new and then the in between and the in between yeah. is where our emotions are just going haywire yeah the wilderness so i am sure that you had over the period of the year emotions <laughs> <laughs> as things either worked or didn't work out according to the plan and as you execute it. So do you remember and tell me maybe you have a story or, or, or a situation 
uh, a memory of how did you push through those emotional wilderness moments and still stick with it? Because I'm asking, because most people, this is where they say, this is too much. Uh, I abort the change. Okay, I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm going back to my old ways. It's not worthy. Or they point at themselves and say, there's something wrong with me. I can't figure this out. Um, and then they blame themselves and judge themselves. So how did you move yeah. that period? Uh, tell us more. Yeah, very good question. I think I always try to surrender myself with people who I can learn something from. And I think very quickly, I, I, mean, I, I I'm part of a big family. And I think very quickly when you're part of a big family, and I, I'm not the oldest or the youngest, I'm somewhere in between. So when you're part of the in-between, then you realize that things don't always go your way because I think if you grow up in a family like mine where I'm no way they, I'm like I'm not the youngest, I'm not the oldest, I'm somewhere in between there. It was very, very hard effectively. So I think yes. that somehow kind of really taught me a whole lot of things. But also I always made sure that I surrender myself, like I surround myself with people that I want to learn something from. That's how I, I ended up even having a mentor. At first, I wouldn't even call him a mentor. I think it was just you know, I suppose somebody that I just kind of caught up with or I suppose a friend or somebody that, you know, I admire over over the years that I actually realized, oh, this is a mentor, actually. So I think the relationship just kind of started from, you know, just kind of like admiring, you know, when you admire something from somebody, but you're just not too sure, okay, how do I, like, how, how do I want more of that? I want more of that in my yes. life. Yes, how do I get to that? Yes, how do I get to exactly. that in my life? Exactly. So I think that's kind of like one of the things that kind of really helped me. So I think other than that, I also had friends who were on the same journey as me. So they might not have been in the same challenge as me, but this friend that come, came out of university, you know, friends who were still going through university. And I think that structure really helped me to kind of almost understand, okay, here's somebody I admire, I want to be like, and they, they have decades of experience ahead of me. But the truth of the matter is they have offered to kind of really help me get there. So that's great. But also I need to have peers who are on the same level as me to make sure that we are going through. So when things are hard, like in an easy relate to what I'm going through and all of that. And I think that kind of really helped me. But at the same time, also, I think I always try to hold the picture of where I want it to be. It sounds a bit off. It sounds a bit... Uh, you know ambitious but I think I always wanted to internalize where do I want my career to go and obviously I had a mentor I could see I, did, I didn't want everything in their career but I wanted a whole lot of that they had in their career and that kind of really helped me to build a picture so I almost had a little bit of a vision or an image of what I wanted to do in my career or where I wanted to head it was just a picture it was a little bit blurry but over time it started becoming clear but I think with that in mind, I almost kind of figure out, like, okay, when I have, I'm having good days, I just got to be able to remember that, okay, it's just going to pass. Tomorrow is going to be another day. What should I need to focus on? And that's why I always wanted to focus on one thing. And I always be very grateful for that one thing that I needed to focus on. And I think that's kind of really what, what got me there. And whenever I spent more than a day on something that went wrong, I had friends who could help me. To kind of be able to kind of like either shake it off or almost kind of like you know help me to just kind of like take a walk or sometimes be brutally honest about the fact that you know I'm lingering on something that won't matter in the big scheme of things but also you know yes. it's just a day so I yeah. think the two side of it where having people peers but also having somebody ahead I can admire really helped me mm. you know what I'm also hearing is that you also had this vision of who you wanted to become. So not just the where you wanted to become as of a, the career, but as a person who you wanted to become because of the mentor, because of the family, the mentorship and the friends. It's, it's and, and you know, I talk about this as part of the transition it's so important to also define and have a vision of who do we want to become and then make decisions choosing from that place with that vision in mind and I hear that so let me just double check um do, do you remember being that conscious of and 
that's the leader that I want to become once I become, once I get the job? Yeah, it's it's a good question because, I mean, we're talking about my first job, right? And I think at that time, you know, obviously, this, you know, I still had a whole long career ahead of me, but I I built a vision already because I come from a very, I mean, growing up, we're very poor. So I think being able to move from the country that I was in to, you know, to another country to, to pursue my studies was already a massive privilege and I didn't want to let my parents down. So I think I had that internally, but also being part of quite a big family, I had obviously like, you know, older siblings that I could look up to, but also there was that, there was an element of pressure also, but I think overall, I think I wanted to be successful, but not necessarily successful just for the material things, but I also naturally and honestly wanted to be somebody that other people could look up to. And I think that really, really helped me. And I think in my heart of hearts, that was always something that grounded me where it's fundamental of what I wanted to do other than all of those different things. Because I think to be quite honest, every engineer who come out of university, they want to be able to make a lot of money. But at the same time also, that is not enough. There needs to be a lot more that grounds you so that when you're having those bad days, you kind of realize also like, okay, what do I, like, you know, what am I aspiring to? And I think I had kind of a little bit of that balance effectively because coming from a poor family, Obviously, there was a whole lot of things where I'm like, I definitely don't want to be in that situation. But at the same time, also, I had the other side of it where it's like, I just really wanted to be a leader or people that somebody that probably leader was not the word that I would use or use at the time. But I just wanted to be that somebody that other people could look up to who could help others also. So I think that kind of really helped me. And uh, I have a beautiful mother and father who are very very honest and who are very very you know they are very transparent and strict with me and I think that kind of already also set the tone about some of those fundamentals that I had already earlier on so I joined my career with coming from a big family but also having you know quite a a really good structure that kind of really helped me and you know I suppose ground me yes yes yeah, that that is what I'm talking about right there. I I, I felt <laughs> I, I felt that that because I mean I can relate and I work with young engineers who that's their first thought is yes I want to be successful I want to be in leadership I want to climb the career the the la- career ladder and there's nothing wrong with that as you said um, that desire then just opens up this opportunity to then figure out what ground what what is your foundation that where as you said in order to get where you want to do you need to think long term you think, need to figure out how to stay consistent how you stay consistently on the path or the direction at least is the path yeah you're, you're going to choose different ones but then how do you stay true to yourself as a yeah. Who is who who are you that you want to be true to? Who do you want to become? And that part of it, what you said beautifully at some point, that who you don't want to become, who you don't want to be, and then being clear on that too. So thanks very much yeah. for sharing that. That that is so inspirational. Oh, thank you. That's um, right, so kind. <laughs> so as we're getting closer to the end, I'm curious. Um so what if you look back i know 10 years who that that's that's an amazing run um what is one thing that you learned about yourself during that that transition that, that period that one year that transition time that uh you could say okay with this i something opened up i i i saw something different I started to think differently, had a different mindset. Yeah, I think the number one, I realized that I didn't know as much as I thought I knew about, <laughs> about obviously life, but also just about my career. And I think very quickly, you can be very technically gifted and you like, you can, you know, solve any problems and all of those different things. But I realized that there was so much that I needed to learn and I needed to just kind of stay humble about the fact that there's a lot to learn and the people that are ahead of me and are working closer to me are not my competition. 
you know, we are all on a journey to just kind of like really help each other. And I think that element really helped me. And I think that's why I always advocate, you know, for, I think, really great culture, but also just kind of being able to ensure that, you know, when you are part of an organization or part of a team, that you're also adding value to it other than just doing your work. So I think that kind of really helped me. But also I kind of realized that, you know, at the end, at the end of the day, there is so much more to your life that can impact your career, but also your career does impact your life. You know, you just got to make sure that you have a whole lot of structure and you're also being very honest and you're being very transparent about, you know, the things that you can do, things that you can't do, but also just kind of making sure that, you know, uh, you, I suppose, replenish yourself also. Because I think sometimes work can be very consuming and it can be quite a lot. It can you have stressful days and you have bad days and you have good days and all of that. And I just made sure that I replenish myself. So I just kind of surround myself with people who can, you know, that I can add value to where we can add value, but also just kind of like make sure that, you know, life outside of work really looks like a an environment that can really add value to me also, or at least kind of like refuel me effectively. And I think that's one of the things. And I think I'm so glad I learned that very early on in my first year of my career, rather than 10 years down the line, because, you know, I, I can, I can say with confidence that I've never had burnouts because I think I had those foundation kind of sets, but also it's very early on in my career. And I made sure that there were people that I could look up to who could easily call things out, but also we could easy, you know, I suppose, uh, celebrate the wins with me. But also when I didn't have wins, they could be like, okay, that's totally fine. Like, you know, so I think that structure and that support structure really, really helped me. And I'm glad I found that early in my career. And, you know, I'm so grateful for it. And um, that's one of the things I never take for granted to just kind of like remind those mentors and the people in my life that I'm very grateful for them because I think very quickly you can get into a space that you realize that you got to where you are by yourself. And there's, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it might be true for certain people, but I think for me, I'm a byproduct of mentors and people who've invested in me. That's why I think I spend a whole lot of time wanting to invest back into people. Just kind of make sure like, okay, what is the one thing that I can add value to or the one person I can add value to? And I think because I realized that honestly speaking, you know, my career would have, hand, would have looked completely different if it wasn't for the people who spent time to invest 10 minutes, 15 minutes and whatever time they had to just make sure that, you know, they impacted me also. Oh, wow. That is amazing. I'm glad I asked the question because um, I hear this really beautiful thing about what you said, replenishing and energy and knowing when I'm low and, you know, when I talk to people who don't have mentors yet, most of them think that it's about them taking away something from the mentors or they don't have anything to give to them. Um, now, we both know that that is not true. But what what is really amazing is what you're saying is to that as an engineer who keeps progressing in their knowledge, in their knowledge level, having someone who is a mentor that someone that or in the peer peer group that it's not always about knowledge exchange. It's not about becoming smarter because of someone else. It's about having someone where you can almost draw energy from, where you can go when you're uh, you know, in red, where you need to refuel, and it's okay. That they will accept you as you are. And, um, and then those those interactions of smiling of of, yeah. con of connecting in a different way where again it's not the intellectual part in mentoring it's 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 the emotional it's the uh the psychological uh it's the belonging it's the relationships that yeah. uh, means so much and and create that refuel yeah a hundred percent yeah, a hundred percent. And I, I, you know, there's so much to our career that I think we probably just don't pay attention to. And I think, you know, every now and then you realize that it's beyond just the work effectively that kind of add value. So, yeah. Well, you did a great job today sharing with us <laughs> how it isn't about just the work and, and, and then we have these highs and lows 
in our careers um, and then how to navigate through those transitions. So Joel, as we're closing, I want to give the mic back to you. Close <laughs> us out. What would you like to leave us with? Whoever is listening, what do you want them to walk away with? Yeah, there's so much I could say. And I think I... It's crazy to think that, you know, my career has changed so much. I started as an engineer. Now I am a early this year. I stepped into the new role as an engineering director. And, you know, very quickly, like you and I were chatting before, kind of pressing record, I've been very much reflecting on my journey and wanting to also just kind of share openly about, you know, my journey and transitioning and all the different transitions. And early this year, I probably started with one of the hardest transition of all effectively because I've moved from being a, a, a an individual contributor into a tech lead, into a man engineering manager and now into engineering director. And I found it very interesting, but I think it's it's so interesting that I had to kind of go back into this first principle. And uh, a couple of months ago, I shared, you know, I, I took some time to write my leadership statements. What do I want? What do I want to be known as a leader? And obviously it's nothing, you know, it's nothing perfect, but I just kind of, I think that's what I would kind of love to kind of drop air, like, you know, leave you with. So I kind of wrote a couple of different words and those are some of the words that ground me. Obviously I, I talked a lot about being grounded and just kind of making sure the person that you want to become. And I think as a leader, you have a big responsibility beyond just managing the people. So I think that's kind of like what made me write this. So I think it's so funny because you mentioned that word. So the word I think for me that I kind of connect to is the word mastery. And that's kind of like, I suppose, like the key element of my leadership where I want to master a whole lot of different things. But this is what I wrote. Mastery in leadership is a deeply personal journey for me. It's about continuously striving to become the best version of myself as a leader, to inspire and empower those around me to reach new heights. It's about... It's not about mastering skills. It's about mastering myself, my mindset, my approach, my impact on others. For me, achieving mastery means embracing the challenges and opportunity that comes my way with courage and determination. It's about consistently pushing myself outside of my comfort zone, learning from both success and failures, and never settling for mediocrity. Mastery in my leadership requires a relentless commitment to growth and self-improvement. It's about seeking feedback, reflecting on my experiences and being open to new ideas and perspective. It's a journey of continuous learning and evo evolution where each day presents a chance to become a better leader than I was yesterday. Above all, mastery in my leadership is about making a meaningful difference in the lives of those I lead. It's about building trust, fostering collaboration and creating a culture where everyone feels valued, supported and empowered to, con to contribute the best. It's a deeply personal quest to leave a lasting legacy of positive impact and inspiration in the heart and mind of those that I have the privilege to lead and interact with regularly. So that's what I would like to kind of leave everybody with. And I think for me, a lot of the things that I've shared, hopefully in listening to that, um, to those few words, you can probably see a lot of the things that I was talking about where they kind of come from so it's very interesting that I had to reflect on it actually early this year and then it almost kind of because I had to face this big challenge of oh I'm an engineering director I'm, I'm a lot more accountable uh, I'm accountable for so much more I'm accountable for managers of manager which could be a whole lot of topic to kind of talk about but yeah. I think for me I had to realize that what does it take? I had to go back to those first principles of what do I what do I want to be known for? What do I want to become in this journey? Because the technical skills very quickly, I could, you know, you can learn them. You can learn from others because I always surround myself with people I can learn from. I have really great peers and people who I learn from. But I realized that beyond that, I needed to do a lot of deep work about as a leader, what is that, what is that going to take? So that's what I would like to leave you or with i'm happy to kind of share the you know the the, the the few words with you so you can have a look at that but yeah, that's kind of like what i've been working on well thank you very much for sharing that an audience that was not a setup i didn't know that he's going to share it so i am in the awe and super grateful for that Joel. um and on the note if people want to connect with you on linkedin and want to ask you questions and read more about um your writing and these reflections where is the best place to connect with you 
Yeah, so right now, LinkedIn is the best place. Uh, I'm currently working on my website, well, of course, a little bit more, but I think LinkedIn is the best place. I try to be as active as possible. So I think when you reach out, honestly, I tend to accept everybody who invites me. Sometimes I get recruiters and very annoying people who just want to ask a whole lot of, you know, who are, you know, want to ask a lot of working with my company and all of that. But I think overall, I'm always very open to just kind of connect with anybody who want to reach out. And, you know, honestly speaking, you know, whenever uh, I can, I always want to make sure that I open my calendar to one of people want to ask, uh, you know, questions and just want to connect. But also, I love just learning from people. I'm very curious about people's journey. So, yeah, I mean, you can kind of reach out on LinkedIn and then, you know, I can always just kind of share my email address. Also, I'm very much religious about just kind of making sure that I connect with that with, with different people. So that's the best place, you know, Shoel Samuel Capipula, it's my kind of uh, my handle. And then you kind of find me on LinkedIn and kind of connect and I'll be happily, you know, uh, I'll be happy to have a chat. I will add those in the show notes. So you will have them. Well, thank you very much for for being here for this opportunity and for the amazing story that you shared with us. I have to say that um, ending with your leadership mastery principles, um after hearing that transition the uncomfortable <laughs> um it was amazing and i can see the parallel how you got there amazing work over those 10 years and i've been following you for for years now um wish you 10 20 30 more <laughs> and for us to be connected so thank you again for being here uh i really appreciate it thank you no, thank you so much. I really appreciate you also. And I'm very grateful for, yeah, many years ago, reaching out and having a chat about management and so on. Very grateful for that. Thank you.